two, one. Woo, we are live. I'm with Michael Nasser. Michael, how are you, my friend? Good, man. Just enjoying uh, the the weather in LA right now. But uh, yeah, how, how are you? Glad I am. I'm well. You're, you're in LA. I, I didn't even know that. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, just um, visiting my sister. She's pregnant and her, her husband's on a bit of a road trip. So I thought I would come down and work out of here for a bit and, and take care of her. So it's been it's been nice. Well, I love the the background, by the way, and uh, I'm a big fan of LA. You know, it's uh, a lot of memories there. Hey, uh, Michael, I know we have a, a bit of a shorter period of time today than I normally take. And so I know you're a busy guy. So I want to kind of dive right in, if you will. Yeah. yeah, I usually start with where did we kind of meet and connect? I think it was probably what, about a year ago now? No, it seems like... Uh... Yeah. No, t- time flies. I think we met, um, we might have met before uh, that that dinner party that Chris Spadafora put on. Right, right, right. Uh, at that at that restaurant, King. Um, but yeah, that was when uh, we we legit met and had a had a good chat. But yeah, that man, that that doesn't sound that doesn't feel like too far away. But but that was probably over a year ago. I know it's amazing all the stuff that's happened, uh, you know, um, and so, so, you know, as I was uh, kind of explaining to you, it was one of my kind of goals, right? I'm, I always have to say that, you know, Bitcoin, even though I'm infatuated with Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin is nothing more than, you know, ones and zeros on the internet or on computers. And so it, it's really nothing uh, if you take out the people. And so I am just fascinated with trying to capture people's stories uh, to start with, you know, before yeah. learning about Bitcoin and then after. Um, and so, you know, and, and I know you guys are, you guys made some announcements about it. I was talking to John, uh, your co-founder on social, uh, was it social club, social club, I think it's called uh, the okay. new app. And yeah. uh, okay. he was, he, he was breaking down the numbers for us. Oh my Lord. Like you guys are killing it. So happy for you. Um, so yeah. So I guess talk to us, but you know, before we get into all those kind of things, let's, let's, let's first start with your story. Yeah. Uh, my story is, you know, traditional finance, uh, and then into crypto. Um, I've always been on the sales side in, in my whole career. Um, and before getting into crypto, I was over at Fidelity Investments, really wanted to, to venture out and, and get into tech. Uh, didn't know too much about Bitcoin or the broader crypto ecosystem, but um, stumbled upon a, uh, a startup exchange called CoinSquare. Uh, back in 2017, they were hiring for like a, a sales exec, someone to help build out their uh, high volume trading desk or what they later called uh, CoinSquare Wealth. Um, so I joined then in, uh, in in late 2017 and was sort of thrown into the fire um, because it was right uh, at the start of the run up. And um, I was pretty much one of the only people you can call to get your hands on a, a good amount of Bitcoin. So uh it was it was an awesome time there, um, and and that's where my career in this space started. Actually, come to think of it, that's how we met. <laughs> I think you were assigned yeah. to me. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, you were probably one of my my first clients then. Yeah. <laughs> funny, funny, cool, man. But you know, oh, it's like wow. You know what? That's that is that's exactly how we met. Now now that I remember, okay, for sure. But that was over the phone. I remember that. Well. I do. I do. I just all kind of came together anyway. So, okay. Traditional finance kind of moved into, I guess at the time, maybe even to this day, uh, really one of the leading exchanges in Canada. So, so good on you. And, and from what I've heard from, you know, on the street <laughs> is that you are a beast when it comes to, you know, the numbers and all of that in terms of what you do. So, so congrats on, on building that reputation, man. It's hard to do that. Yeah. Thanks. It honestly, it, it really doesn't take much to be uh, a good trusted name in the space all you got to do is is not screw up and 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 just be um you know true to your word and um and and i did get quite lucky <clears throat> joining um a, an early exchange that ended up being the biggest um you know very quickly or sorry very early and um because of that i i just built a, a tremendous network and um yeah i think you know nearly half a billion um worth of transactions have flown through uh, uh you know gone through uh m- my hands over the last three three and a half four years so it's been it's been awesome 
Amazing. Wow. Okay. So I guess, I guess, you know, um, anything else you want to share in terms of like your story, whether it's like shit about, you know, your, I'm, I'm a bit curious, actually, like, what were you as like, like a younger person, like as a kid, like, were you into computers? Were you more like the jock? Like, uh, were you, I don't know, yeah. a hybrid of some shit? Uh, not into computers. Uh, not the greatest student always got by i went to university uh, of windsor i was in their business program so i've got a commerce degree um yeah i uh, always loved to be around friends i was a, a a big baseball player um you know in my in my teens um and you know played a bit of hockey snowboarded all the all the canadian stuff and um yeah i, I think i was a, a more of a, a social guy and um, and then, you know, sort of, uh, always had, a, I guess, a bit of a, a gift of gab and, uh, thought that sales would be the best place for me. And, and that's really, as soon as I got out of university, I, I went right into, right into sales and, and never left. Beautiful. And then, and then also just a bit curious in terms of what was your, I don't know, kind of like relationship with money. Um, you know, because Bitcoin ultimately, I don't know, I think a lot of people believe that it's trying to reinvent money to some extent. Um, just curious, like, did was it something that you had, I don't know, like, were you, were you one of those kids that got like allowances and were you like budgeting your money? I, I know for me, it was like a, a bit of a shock when I became an adult. It was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm like, I have barely no experience with this thing. I didn't, I probably didn't think about it too much. I mean, I always wanted to, to have and make a lot of money. And um, I think, you know, in school and and in a lot of different parts of life um my, my dad always instilled um uh thoughts of money rewards um so if it was in high school and i had an exam there would always be like a, a monetary reward uh based on the outcomes of of my grades and um and sure uh, you know allowances and and things like that so money's always been important i've, I've always had a job um and, you know, going into sales, what I really like uh, about that uh, career path is you, you get what you put into it. Um, so the harder you work, the more you make. And, um, and, and uh, so, yeah, that's, that's sort of been my relationship with money. But in terms of the, the history of money, um, that's, yeah. that's what really led me down the, the rabbit hole. And how did that start for you? Was it just like personal curiosity? Or were you on some Reddit thread? Did a friend come to you and like nudge you about it? But uh, how, did, how did that come? Uh, I, I have the same story as a lot of other people, you know, back in like 2011, 2012, um, going back to my old, old uh, Twitter account, um, you know, looking at my friends and I talking about Bitcoin and, and Litecoin and um, but never ended up doing anything with it. And it had nothing to do with the principles behind uh, cryptocurrencies. It was, um, or sound money. It was, it was really just to, you know, to do well on an investment. Um, and it was probably, man, it must have been um, after the 2018 epic drop and the, you know, what seemed to be decades of a crypto winter where my career was still you know, thriving, um, but I was a lot less busy that did I really go down the rabbit hole and realize what it was that that people were, were buying off me and, and selling. So um, yeah, it was probably mid to late 2018, where I really understood the, you know, why Bitcoin so important. And was it like a tipping point? Or was it a bit of a process? Like, were you just kind of mulling on it for a while? Or did did you have like, you have like a distinct kind of aha moment where somebody was like, dude, <laughs> Yeah, I, I just I think that people just need to figure it out for themselves. Like no one's gonna tell you uh, about it, um, or you know they they can, but um, for you to really uh, understand it and appreciate it, I think it's one of those things that you have to you know fall down uh, on yourself. Um, so yeah, it wasn't really an aha moment. I read um, the Internet of Money by Andreas Antonopoulos. I read it once and I thought it was really great. Uh, and then I read it again, except I made notes on it like I was studying. Um, and, uh, and, and then from there, I, I started to really understand like what money used to be and what money is today and why, um, you know, gold uh, was a great store of value and, 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 uh, and, and why Bitcoin is, is even better. So it, it just something that took a long time to, to really um, 
you know, ingrain itself into my, uh, into my psyche. And, and you know, Michael, one thing that resonated, I think in one of our conversations earlier, you were telling me about kind of like the importance of meeting people where they're at, you know, whether it's at like a Christmas dinner uh, around the dinner table with family or whether you're talking to like some CEO of maybe a, a big bank. Um, the, 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 the key is to, uh, I don't know. I think you were, you were saying this. No, um, but just curious. Like, do you mind? Do you mind maybe touching on I'm, that? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not. I'm. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what you mean. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so I was asking you last time about you're at a dinner table or something, and with a family, and you're trying to explain Bitcoin to them, and you were kind of explaining like the importance of like you know because of maybe your background yeah. in finance and whatnot, you find that a lot of Bitcoiners are a bit. Oh. rough around the edges and I, I thought that was a very noteworthy point because i agree i think bitcoiners can be a little hasty and and rightfully so yeah. to some extent but it does irk me a bit so yeah, i wanted no, to touch fair on enough that. um i think uh it's really important when you're speaking to someone who is interested in learning about uh bitcoin in, in the broader crypto market that that you can just display a, a lot of empathy because um, you know, as much as it makes sense to you as the person delivering the information, um, it's really foreign to, um, you know, the, the person sitting across the desk. So, um, I, and, I, and I do think that it, it kind of all goes back to the history of money. Um, a lot of people don't know that there was something before dollars um, and, and how, uh, you know, fiat money came to be. Um, so explaining that, uh, and I mean, the macro backdrop that everyone is experiencing right now couldn't, you know, play into this, uh, any, any more better. Um, so just showing what, uh, what really is important, the, the sort of the key sticking points on, on Bitcoin, um, and then keeping it really simple, I think is, is important. And then just letting them you know, pointing them to the to the right places to, to go out and, and find more information for themselves, because I, I do think it is something that people do need to, you know, um, spend some personal time with. Hey, uh, Michael, have you been following the the news about is it Game Shop or GameStop? I always forget. Game, is game it Game Shop? GameStop. Have you been following this? Yeah. It is wild. Yeah, it's mental. Um, I mean, uh, and I think Robin Hood, um, uh, uh, shut down um, GameStop, AMC, and, and some of these other stocks that were going crazy, um, you know, because of the whole Wall Street bets, Reddit, subreddit, uh, subreddit, and um, yeah, it, it's it's incredible. But but you know, again, there's I I think hopefully, and we saw it with Dogecoin this morning. I mean, uh, I've not sold Dogecoin since 2017. And Dogecoin was up like 200% over the past 24 hours. And, and I kind of had a feeling wow. that would happen uh, because people are, are fed up with, with, uh, with how things are and, and you know, they're, they're tired of, of being pushed around and, um, and they, you know, realized that if they came together and, and wanted to do something that they really could have an impact. And it's, it's a shame that, um, these platforms are are bending over and and uh, not letting them, uh, you know, do what they want or have the same sort of pull as the you know the hedge funds of the world. And and I really think that we're going to see a, a very positive impact on Bitcoin and and the broader crypto market because of it. Because there's no way to control that. Yeah. Um, and you know, I wanted to kind of just touch on a, a kind of a, a subtle point here, Michael, which is that. You know, by the way, I'm really happy, okay? Anybody that wants to get into Bitcoin, come on in, right? Open arms. I love it because it's all all good for Bitcoin. Um, ugh, but there are companies out there now, uh, Wealthsimple, PayPal, Robinhood, that allow you to buy Bitcoin. Buy right. Bitcoin. Ugh. But are you actually buying Bitcoin on these platforms? Like, are you able to take possession of your private keys, not your keys? Not like, I mean, or is it something different? Because that seems to be at the heart of some of these problems and challenges that, that, that the millennia, you know, the younger people are waking up to, which is that Robin can just shut it down. Like they can literally shut it down anytime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's well, you're not really buying the underlying asset, um, but you are buying exposure. Uh, or getting exposure through these sort of derivatives. 
um, on these platforms, which I do think is is pretty important. It, it opens up um, uh, retail to uh, really easy ways to, to pick up some of this exposure. And again, um, for a lot of people, uh, there are multiple steps down the rabbit hole and, um, and taking custody of your own um, Bitcoin is, is certainly on the, on the, on the higher uh, part of that staircase. Um, so uh, I, I think it's great. I think it serves its purpose. Uh, those companies have obviously benefited greatly. And so is the broader crypto market because as you know, funds pour into these, uh, whether they're fun, uh, you know, grayscale Bitcoin trust or GBTC, um, any of those uh, sort of closed end funds, or any of the you know the platforms like Robinhood or PayPal, um, well, simple, uh, where the the price is benefiting because those bitcoins are being purchased and you know they're being purchased and, and locked away safely. So um, I I don't have a problem with it, um, but uh, you know as those users learn more about. Um, what it is that they're actually buying exposure to the the hopes would be that they'd realize the importance of you know not your keys not your coins yeah 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 100 percent. and so so michael i know um so what so just to kind of shift gears into like the sat street story um you know one of my main goals uh for doing this thing is to help people realize that yes bitcoin can make you you know, wealthy and NGU, blah, blah, blah. But um, there's kind of a, a deeper thing here, which is that you can also build on top of Bitcoin. You can actually devote your time and your career and your business and your energy and your network. You can actually put it into Bitcoin and actually earn Bitcoin. And, you know, what I mean, you can do all these things, right? So, 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 so really curious, you know, how you, so you, you worked in the financial industry, worked, of, you know, in kind of the, some of the leading exchanges or whatever exchange in Canada, how do you now go, okay, well, I want to, you know, do my own thing or whatever. And, you know, and kind of flex. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, I, uh, the, the reason why we called, sorry, you can probably hear there's might be a lawnmower in the background and I would love to be doing this inside. Um, we can move in if you want. I'm good anyway. Yeah, it, it's actually even louder inside. Um, my, my sister runs a business and it's her house. So she's uh, on the phone as, as much as I am. Um, so uh, unfortunately, it would be a, a lot of chatter in the background. But um, yeah, the, the reason why we called Sat Street Sat Street is because of the notion that you know one of the one of the leading um, detractors that that we hear from new entrants into the market is Bitcoin's too expensive, um, and and you know those those people end up flowing uh, their funds into uh, cheaper uh, al alternative coins. So you know being branded sat street um you know really shows that we're forward thinking and and um and we want to really get the message across that you can buy less than one bitcoin um so yeah there's a lot of flexibility in in running your own business um there's a lot of really cool um uh products that we're working on you know we really think payroll is important um, having like an automated way to buy, um, buy Bitcoin. Um, and so we, we actually did launch like a, a pseudo um, payroll uh, program that works with uh, bill pay. Um, so, you know, employees of companies can um, line up uh, their, their, uh, their online banking payee uh, bill pay information to, to match how they get paid and automatically have their funds flow through uh, into their Sat Street account and be automatically converted into Bitcoin on like a weekly, even a daily basis. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of flexibility and um, and and we're we're super excited to you know to have all of that um, you know power to to you know get to decide how we move forward on things. And Michael, what, what have been some of the maybe uh, unforeseen challenges? You know, I know some of them maybe we can't always speak about as entrepreneurs, but maybe some that you might want to share um, that, you know, that I don't know whether it be mental or I don't know, uh, just in general, like tech or reg or whatever it be. But what has been one of the kind of areas that you that you maybe didn't expect uh, to do as much heavy lifting and others, you know, looking to make moves in this space would be mindful of, you know, kind of paying attention to? Um. It's been it's been pretty uh, it's been pretty smooth sailings for us. We've we've just like absolutely crushed it. I mean, we've uh, only been around for for around seven short months, and 
um, we're, we're coming up on 110 million traded and um, we've got a pretty significant um, uh, assets under custody. Uh, but I, I mean, banking is a challenge. Um, so that was a, a tough one to crack, um, but we've made great inroads there. Um, regulations are something to pay attention to certainly um, as well, uh, but I mean, uh, we've got a very manual process right now in how we trade. So um, there's a lot of very early nights and, and sorry, late nights and very early mornings uh, because we do not want to be missing trades. So, um, you know, being available or sort of, I guess, portraying that we offer this premium level of service and sticking to that when crypto trades uh, 24 seven is, is a bit difficult, but um, we truly care about our clients and, and, our, and our service that we provide. And, um, you know, that's why uh, you know, myself and, and more so my, my co-founder, John, who is uh, our, our, our uh, head trader as well, um, doesn't really get too much sleep, but it's all in, in great fun. Cool. Yeah, I know. We, when I was ta chatting with him on, on Social Club, he was uh, he was literally like like closing a deal as we spoke, as we were speaking. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 just give me yeah. a minute. So I, I love the uh, love the energy, love everything. Um, OK, anything else you want to share on Sat Street? I mean, I think that's a great success story. I mean, frick, like you're out of Canada, you know, in seven months to go from like nothing to what? A hundred million. I think I saw you guys tweet yeah, out literally, literally zero Insane. to hundred insane um, insane like that's i'm so happy for you guys man um look i mean um i think we're really showing uh our strength and our core competencies around um dealing with institutional type clients um and we're really excited about the opportunity to bring that down to retail um as we rigorously test um out our um sort of scalable solution there um we're, yeah, there, there's, there's a lot going on behind the scenes and um, we're just, you know, really uh, uh, pushing towards being the best Bitcoin company in Canada. Um, and, uh, and, and it's, it's really exciting. I love the energy, man. That's, uh, that's great. Okay. So if, if that's, uh, if that's uh, everything on Sad Street, then let's maybe move on to the next question. Um, what is, uh, what is one thing that you believe to be true that most others in Bitcoin may or, or would probably disagree with you on? Oh, uh, see, you asked me that question last time. And then I was thinking before this one, what were the questions that you asked me that I wish um, I had a, a better answer for. So what, what do I believe that might not be common for other Bitcoiners? Um, well, okay, let me spin that around to you and then maybe you'll give me an idea. Yeah, sure, I'll give you an idea. I think this. I think this this what I'm doing. I think this is very counterintuitive. Like I, I uh, you know, I think... Uh, I think that most people do not recognize that that there is a much bigger opportunity to actually build on top of Bitcoin and it actually serves Bitcoin uh, uh, that I just don't see anyone talking about, thinking about. Like, yeah, there's like, oh, building on Bitcoin for devs. No, yeah. I'm not talking about that at all. I mean, yeah, I am kind of like as in that's maybe a third of the pillar, but I think regs, banking, yep. mindset, you know, authors, YouTubers, freaking OTC guys, uh, you know, every everyone, miners. I'm just trying to come at it from as many angles as possible because because that's how I think, you know, we, we connect with, with people because, and it's about the story. So th I, maybe that's, maybe the first one that would come to mind. Um, maybe the second one, if I had to pick one, just like being open-minded, but guarded at the same time, you know, like uh, Bitcoin is, I see, I, you know, the movie 300, I see it as like an army of like, you know, dudes, but it's like, yeah, I think that's important, but I also think it can cost us because, you know, then you're not open to innovation. And like, I'll just be like, give one example, like Ethereum, like most people in Bitcoin hate Ethereum. I've, I'm, I don't hate Ethereum. Like I, I'm, I'm not an Ethereum, ETH head or whatever, but, um, but like, for example, decentralized exchange, like that is a noble, I mean, is it, it, is it the same pursuit as perfecting money or whatever as Bitcoin? No, like I think money and Bitcoin, that is like blah, blah, blah. 
but the idea of decentralizing exchange between people to me is a is a very noble cause. So I try and be a bit more, you know, level headed towards my criticism. And and I'm just excited, man. Like I've been in this space for so long, you know, it's like I've literally like lost co-founders to death, to to like wrongful arrests, you know, where court cases we've had, this, that, and and all of it's come around and it's all worked out. And now we're vindicated. And I'm just like, I just feel like it's my duty now to tell other people, be like, yo, it's possible. Like there's other people that can do it. You can do it. So let's, let's build on Bitcoin. Anyways, I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> that, that, no, that was good, man. Um, so, okay. So one that wouldn't, I, I'm sure if I thought about it, I'd have a, a, a better answer or maybe one that was a little bit more um, uh, thoughtful, but one that, one thing that I think um, is 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 something that would be um, not not kosher for for the Bitcoin world um, would be I don't fully agree that that self custody um, is always the best way to go. So interesting. You know, Talk to but, me about this one. I like this. Go. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, between John uh, Lester, my co-founder, and I, like we've we've uh, caught multiple. Um, clients who are newly entering the space with with big money, um, we've stopped them from getting scammed. Um, we've uh, there's a lot of um, uh, phishing emails going out that look really good from Ledger and, and Trezor and um, and uh, it. Some people are if, if you're not there yet, then sometimes it is safer not custodying your own coins. We created a, a self-custody guide. We really take time to um, talk to our clients about um, protecting their own wealth and um, best practices around it. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, not your keys, not your coins is, is very much true and, and, and should be the motto. Um, but I do think for net new entrants into the space, um, if they're looking to buy um, and, they're, and they're looking to buy right away, um, then I think if they buy and, and leave it um, on a platform, whether it's, you know, ours or they make use of our qualified custodian, you know, either Coinbase Custody or, or Gemini Trust um, in the interim, um, I think that is, is not a bad solution if you're if they're still trying to wrap their heads around um, uh, around, uh, um, you know, securing their own wealth. So that would be probably pretty con controversial, but I mean, we've just seen it firsthand. So um, I'm, I'm pretty happy to, to feel that way. Yeah, it's funny, no? I mean, uh, I, I totally agree with you. With me, with you. Um, and even forget, like, uh, not forget, but like, you know, not even just retail, like even super wealthy people, I found that they're not really interested in, uh, you know, in holding their own keys because they want, you know, insurance and they want kind of like, you know, all these other bells and whistles. So, uh, okay, okay. So I think that's good. Um, hey, just as we kind of, um, you know, taper off here towards the end here. Um, a couple questions. Any thoughts on, I guess, AI in general as a maybe as a tool to help build your business or as a more like esoteric, like 20 year out, take over the world type of deal? I don't know. Do you, does it come into your your radar at all? I mean, I've been reading a couple of books um, on AI. No, uh, it doesn't really come into play with with what we do. Um, I think that there could be a place for it um, when it comes to um, sort of bettering or um, uh, optimizing our smart order routing systems. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's honestly a, an area that, that I don't have too much experience in myself and um, that we don't currently, we don't, you know, currently make use of. Um, so yeah, I would, I would love to throw that back at you though, and, and let me know a, a couple of interesting tidbits from your AI readings. Yeah. I don't know, man. I've been, I've been reading a couple of books. There's a guy named Kai Fu Lee who used to work for, I think Apple and he kind of was part of, I think Siri and Google. And then he, I don't know, uh, interesting perspective. Um, I think the, the, the TLDR on the big picture stuff is it's not going to take over the world anytime soon. Like we, we're still like at least four or five like major breakthroughs away from um, from something like that happening. So so no existential. I don't believe there's a, a super existential threat in the in the next like twenty years or whatever. Um, 
But I do think that as AI progresses, humans will have to think more and more of how to position themselves uh, to, to be, you know, kind of like uh, most useful, right? Because right. there are certain things that we've seen now that the money, uh, sorry, not money, but that computers and, and AI can do far better. And so I think, actually, I think one of the points you brought up, empathy um, is one of those things that I think if you're as a human being, like that's one thing that I think that computers and AI will not be able to replicate anytime soon. So so if you're tapping on that wavelength, I think you're yeah. off to a good start. The, the only real, I mean, I'm sure I've had other experiences with AI, but the, the one where I felt it the most was um, one of my clients <clears throat> got a new, um, uh, a, a new Tesla and uh, it was the self-driving one. And he picked me up and, and we went for a spin um, a few months ago and that was incredible. Like my dream car went from being like a Lambo to being a Tesla. Um, and didn't you get a Tesla? Yeah. <laughs> okay, there you go. So uh, yeah, so that- a Model X, okay. that, uh, after was, Bitcoin, that's my favorite thing. Yeah, so it was, yeah. A, it was a Model X um, and and I was just mind blown. Um, like, you know, no hands on the DBP, ripping around corners at 120 kilometers. It was, it was frightening, but it was, uh, it, it just it just made you think like why would what is the point of having um gas cars where you know humans are the ones driving it and um so whatever that means um i'm i'm bullish yeah dude hey have you been following this guy named uh i think i'm gonna butcher his name is it steve barber or something out of alberta um uh, upstream data yeah uh, i gotta get him on the show i've been trying to get him man he's freaking crazy but he, he's kind of like the like i'm all, all with you on that because i'm from alberta um but he's been kind of singing a different tune and I, I like guys like that that are like making you think the opposite of what everyone else is thinking like i've been kind of like always like ah oil's gone I, I drive an electric car but i don't know man he's been saying shit that just like blows my mind lately do you know what i'm talking about or yeah no? i know he, I've, I've met him once before um, you did okay He's real life. He's not AI. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying anything about, about oil and gas. Um, I work with uh, most of the miners in Canada. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the, the largest ones make great use of, um, of stranded gas and, 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 um, and what Alberta has to offer. So um, I was just more so fascinated by the AI behind um, behind Tesla. Um, 100%, and, man. 100%. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hey, think. hey! I was gonna say on the Alberta note. Do you think is it wishful thinking on my part to think that there maybe could be a Bitcoin mining renaissance out of Alberta that actually helps turn things around? I hope so. Um, there are some, you know, geopolitical factors that come into play, um, but there are there are some there are some big big uh, operations out there and and there's always a lot of interest um, from counterparties that I speak to but so it, I, I don't know I mean you you can you can do well um, from a from an electricity cost perspective um, and uh, you know I, I work pretty closely with a with an off grid um, power generation specialist um, who uh, you know, I think is, is the best of what they do. And, and I know there, you know, there's some, there's, I think this year, there'll be some really interesting headlines um, around Alberta. Um, and it would be a shame if they weren't, because I think they, I think it could be massive. I'm so pumped about that too. Um, uh, Michael, on that, on that note, just, uh, yeah, sorry, John was mentioning as well is that you guys are, you guys have on, onboarded all these large miners. You know, I think the narrative around, oh, Bitcoin mining is in China and it's like dominated by China is kind of like another one of those things that irks me a bit because when you're in the scene, you kind of know what's up. And, but, but are you, I mean, I, I don't want you to sh disclose anything private, but are you able to kind of shed some light on at least maybe the average listener that, that like that, that Bitcoin mining is a thing in Canada? Yeah. Uh, Bitcoin mining is a thing in Canada. It's a thing in, in North America in, in general, um, you know, uh, in, in Europe, uh, places like, uh, Russia, um, it's, it's big all over the place, but it go figure that it's big in China. I mean, um, that's where all the hardware is manufactured. 
Um, so it, it's more of a supply chain thing and um, it is becoming more and more decentralized out of China. Um, so that's positive, um, but I don't really hold too much weight on, on that um, sort of negative connotation. I, I think that um, it, China plays an important part in mining. Um, I think that um, it only makes sense from a supply chain perspective and from the fact that they can, they've got access to extremely cheap electricity that, um, that China is, a, is an amazing spot to mine. Um, however, you know, if some of the risks there are that the Chinese government comes in and, and decides that mining is, is now illegal, um, well, what would happen is that if all these miners shut down, um, Bitcoin would still be fine. Um, the hash rate would obviously shift over from China to other parts of the world. Um, and, uh, you know, I guess transactions would just be a little slower um, for, for, for a certain amount of time until things sort of reconfigure. And, um, and I don't think Bitcoin would be impacted at all. So um, there, I don't, I'm not concerned with the whole notion that um, you know, Bitcoin mining is, is extremely centralized in, in China. Uh, and, and I think there is an industry in, in Canada and uh, big in the U.S. as well. And the other thing I want to quickly touch on is you also mentioned uh, earlier is that in, uh, so mining, yeah, but institutions, right? Like we've been watching Michael Saylor and all these guys now talk about how Bitcoin is this engineered treasury asset that, you know, protects you against um, inflation and et cetera, et cetera. Um, is that a phenomenon that's just limited to the United States or are we seeing a bit of that in Canada? Yeah, not, not at all. Um, we, uh, we, we deal with a lot of um, both private and publicly traded companies doing um, and helping them on their treasury management. Um, so uh, yeah, it was really refreshing to see. Um, I mean, MicroStrategies did it over the summer um, and then followed by, um, by Square uh, who moved part of their treasury in. And then we just saw at the desk um, and you know, mind you, we're, we're a pretty small shop. Um, a lot of private companies coming to us for treasury reserve strategies. Um, and they hadn't even heard, some of them hadn't even heard about micro strategies or, or the Square News. Um, they were just being mindful of, of what was going on in Canada um, with you know, the money supply increasing at like 400% year over year um, and, and being scared of, of holding their assets uh, in cash. So uh, we've helped a number of companies uh, again, mostly on the private side to do this. And um, it seems like, you know, every other week we're, we're helping a new one. So Michael, 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 one more question, dude. Okay. Uh, sorry. I keep saying one more question, but I got, I got, you still, you told me I got to the end of the, the hour here. So I'm going to, I got another five minutes here. Well, uh, Stephen Harper, former prime minister of Canada recently said that he could see something like Bitcoin on the central bank uh, balance sheet as well. Did you hear that? I, yeah, I, I read an article on it, um, which is awesome. So, right? yeah. I yeah. love that. I love that. Okay. It'd, so it'd be, it'd be better yeah. if it was a, a current, uh, a current prime minister. Um, but, uh, hey, you know, you know, Justin Trudeau's brother is, uh, Kyle Kemper or yeah. like half brother. So I interviewed him. Yeah. He's like hardcore with the Bitcoin train. So, uh, yeah. we're getting there. We're getting there. Former prime yeah. minister, current prime minister's brother, you know, <laughs> Um, okay, Michael, in closing, uh, buddy, what, what, what do you want to share with in terms of how do people tap into your, you know, consciousness, Twitter, um, what's your website, maybe repeat all that kind of stuff so that people can, you know, get a hold of you. Yeah, um, you can reach Sat Street at www.satstreet.com. So S-A-T-S-T-R-E-E-T. Um, my Twitter is, uh, at Mike Nasser 91. Um, and uh, I write a pretty bomb newsletter uh, that goes out every Friday morning. Um, so you can find me on Medium as well and subscribe there. Um, but otherwise, if you're listening to this and, and you're looking at purchasing a higher volume uh, amount of, of Bitcoin or, or really any other uh, digital asset, um, we'd love to talk to you. Um, you know, I think we offer the best service in Canada, obviously a little bit biased, but I've been doing this for a long time and, and we're really kicking ass. So um, yeah, feel free to reach out and 
uh, we'd be glad we're, we're, you know, we're, we're happy to be doing this in Canada. Love it, man. I love the energy, love the story, love everything, man. I'm just so proud of you. Proud of you. John. Hey, I don't know John as well, um, obviously, but yo, the invite's open to him. If he wants to come on and share his story, I'd love to, you know, he's got, he's got a very colorful one. But with that, I guess we'll bring it to a close. Hang on for like two seconds. 